Greetings, everyone. Thank you. Thank you for being here. Thank you for waiting for me. It is such an honor to be here with you. Wow. Started off with a little dance. Get ready, you all. Get ready. This is going to be the most important, the most gigantic, infinite, important video, the most that you will ever watch on the Lionsgate. Wow. 8 day portal. You understand understand what why? Why every year? Why is it so powerful? What's going on? Why do people make tons of videos on the 8 day portal of the Lionsgate? I'm about to share with you why. Whoa. Okay, so um <laughs> stance it off for a minute. Dance with me. Yeah. All right, guys. Keep dancing all weekend. Keep dancing every day. Dance to the song of your creation. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for being here. I am Aurora. I am the founder to Aura Hypnosis Entity Removal Pass Life Regression. I am also the, uh, the author, author to Galactic Soul History of the Universe, which you can find under Amazon, under paperback and ebook audiobook under my website risingphoenixaurora.com where you can find out more information about me with all the incredible most beautiful things that we offer courses sessions classes certifications retreats online workshops you can find out all that information there and all the content that we give out to the world every day we are over 600 videos alone on youtube all these 600 videos can also be found so keep that in mind in case you ever need to find me somewhere else uh, under Odyssey. Go subscribe to Odyssey, guys. We got to raise up the subscribers there. So go do that. The links are all found under every one of my videos. So you can find all 600 videos there. That's the only platform I have where um, you can find all my videos at. So I host retreats. My next retreat is in Nashville. Amazing. The Parthenon. Look it up. Got it. Athena is there. Love to meet you there. You can learn how to remove yourself from the inverted matrix, stepping into your organic timeline. And if you think that you are not a healer, that is not true. We're all healers. We're all given the, that's our birth given right as beautiful source beings created from source to be able to self heal our bodies. We do it every day. We just don't realize we're doing it. But if it is time, it's time for you to step into your organic timeline and that those on that workshop, that retreat, teaches you how to do that for yourself and it is most beautiful so those of you who are trained um, or certified or raw reiki or any of our courses let us know in chat um, write your comments how beautiful it is and how much so how important it is that you do take that choice that organic choice to step into this empowerment that's been waiting for to be unleashed and invoked and activated within you everyone can do it you're a grandma a mother a father whoever you are young adult you can do it and it will be life transforming so i'd love to meet you in nashville there's still some spots available <sighs> and uh the next online workshop which teaches the aura hypnosis entity removal passive regression guys you all if you want to figure out how to counter arconic people how to counter reptilians how to con remove implants from yourself and so on or even just in a situation that is very inverted artificial you feel the oppression the control that is the workshop that you want to do the retreat because it teaches you how to use sacred alchemy symbol to not allow their infringement or influence of these negative polarized aliens or dark entities throughout the universe to influence you or harm you anymore and you learn how to contain how to transmute how to positive polarize or really um transmute and eradicate artificial from within your life and all that you are so who does not want to do that you all it feels good do it meet me in nashville this year in november huge and the next workshop again is in september so more information on my website risingphoenixaurora.com i offer all my sessions 
I still I do sessions, even though I certify this. Uh, you can find more practitioners on their aura practitioners.com. But yes, I still do sessions. So I'd love to meet you through a session reading and so on. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for being here. I am pumped up. I am excited about this video. May you be excited and pumped up as well in your own way. Um, yes, but to support this video and all the content that we work so hard to deliver every day to you all, just for $4 a month, you can go to Patreon, Rising Phoenix Mystery School, and you get live Q&A and private group video call with me and the private group there on Patreon. So love to see you there as well. So I believe that is all. Yes, that is all. Thank you. Thank you. Write your questions here now in comments. For some reason, the link is acting funky on my some of my social media and it's not showing the right image. So but we know that we're here. It's a lion's gate. Here we are. Wow. Whoo! Transmission. Here we go. Um, yeah. So write your questions. Gina's there and she is uh, looking out for the questions for you all. And she's going to hand them over to me. Okay, um, so before we get started, as it's about to get beautifully intense, gorgeous, uh, electrifying, <laughs> um, I do not consent to you haters and trolls and people who are here to spread any kind of hatred, gossip, whatever you are, bully. I don't consent to you. I don't agree to you. I am too sovereign. Don't even try it. It'll be yours to transmute. Keep your entities to yourself. Thank you. All right, so let's get started. Wow, whoo, incredible. All right, I do suggest that you do go watch our, our other Lionsgate videos that we've had in the past years. We'll add the links later here so you can click them for your viewing. Wow, so we've been delivering sacred knowledge over to you from Sumeria, from Babylon, from Egypt, from positive reigns where there were positive beings who were assisting the collective and year after year day after day week after week we're here friday every life uh, life friday 1 p.m central time we've delivered these messages over to you of what these benevolent beings are communicating to us and telling us the truth the truth of what is really going on what is really out there um and what has been a past of our earth's history so we've delivered Mayan sacred information. We've also delivered Tartarian sacred information, especially with the Antarctica series, if you haven't seen that, the Tar Antarctica Tartarian series. Wow. So here we are. We're going to put it all together, and here we go. So last Lionsgate, you guys remember how I said that we were preparing for 2024 and specifically having to do with children, pedophilia, assisting the children of earth so here we are in the now and it has begun one the movie that came out sound of freedom saving children speaking in awareness of children trafficking sex trafficking all of that which i covered you can watch that video again as well so it has begun and the marking point of that deliverance of that movie in the theaters on July 4th actually began that, 7-4. So they, it's July 4th, right? They do it invertedly to use that negative energy of people eating a lot of meat, getting drunk, religious, whatever they're doing, um, you know, blowing up fireworks that are scaring children and animals and causing a lot of trauma on earth as they're going off. So, Instead, we countered that with speaking of awareness towards children. So I wanted to point that out specifically. Now I would like to, because that was part of our transmission that explained what was about to come and here it is. And I wanted to tell you it has begun. So 2024, like I said in, in our last transmission of the Lionsgate will be the most important year of our revolution, our spiritual revolution, and us standing up for against these inversions and infringements and control violations upon humankind. And it has begun and the momentum is going strongly full throttle and there is no stopping it at this point. So thank you to all those who joined us in our last year's Lionsgate and all the ones prior who were part of the collective source love light holding the space for 
the organic timelines to be birthed forth. So thank you know that you are part of that. Whether you're here listening to this video or some of you who have not come across the sacred, positive source of light knowledge, you are part of this. So I want to humbly thank you for holding that space so that we're able to achieve this energy collectively. Okay. All right. So that's my opening introduction there. But let's talk now about the lion's game. So, yes, we hear tons of people talking about it, right, um, year, to, year after year. But why is this so important? Why? Why? The 8 portal? What's going on? So we are about to begin, right? So we, August 1st is the beginning peak point. But the truth that it actually began... So according to Egyptian, and I was talking to um, a beautiful client, is it this week? Yeah, this week. And um, she was explaining to me some of the Egyptian, she briefly she explained to me um, some of the Egyptian information and how actually um, the new year begins in Egyptian sacred um, information so the 25th so basically what i'm telling you is that the lion's gate energy has begun july 25th okay all right it's going to pivot and become true beginnings at august 1st and then it's going to be at its climax like the mountain peak like a pyramid like a mountain the peak at 8 8 portal so that's within the gregorian calendar but if you think about it Technically, in Ethiopia today, today that we are speaking on September, no, not September, uh, July 28th, 2023, today is actually November 21st, 2015. Did you guys know that? So that the, the Ethiopian calendar is still going by the 13 moon cycle, and it is the most accurate, actually, calendar. So they uh, infringed upon it by changing it to 12 12 months cycle when it's actually 13 moon cycle um so as we know in august there are going to be two full moons the first one is going to be on the first so get ready for that and then the second one will be uh, even more gigantic than that but they represent basically mother divine mother and father so the one in uh is female is going to be female um so august 1st and then the one i think it's august 30th is is going to be the blue moon which represents divine father now once more we've you've also watched the schumann resonance video so why is this so important because it's a continual leveling up so why is it called um the lion's gate right because an actual portal a gate does open a gateway, a stellar gateway opens up on Earth. And let me explain to you what that means. Okay, so one, we've talked about the pyramids, thousands of them spread out throughout Earth under ruins or some are known. Okay, two, we've talked about the Tartarian temples, how they hold up the blueprints to our Earth's history. And there are also points so you could visualize them like the pyramids are the main conduits like if you were to put a crystal grid together they're the main conduits of the energy and then but with that when you have main conduits you can't have just one main crystal you have to have other points maybe smaller crystals that then connect like a crystal grid to the one big one so in other words if there's say we use a pyramid of giza pyramid of giza pyramids so there are the main beacon ones then we also have tartarian temples the churches the monuments they call them monuments but they're goddess temples gods and goddesses temples that represent these embodiments so every single one of these represent of different being throughout creation that are part of our astrology and our stars right so we talked about it last year how the pyramid of giza completely lines up with the star series in that moment in time of this period of the lionsgate and how 
basically a portal, a, a gateway, Lion's Gate opens up. We're all about to like blow your mind, you guys. So we're about to go into the details, but first you need to understand this. So what is, I'm gonna explain to you what that gate means. Okay, so, um, all right. So we understand Tartarian buildings. So they're the smaller points that make up. Okay, so you, when you sketch out a drawing, you know those uh, children coloring books, right? So, and then you gotta meet the points to make out that that drawing. So they're the other points to help make up the whole picture. So they're just as significant. You can't make out, you know, do the coloring book image unless you have the other points to make it into the shape of whatever those that coloring page is, like a lion. Let's say it's a lion you're drawing, you're coloring in. Okay. We are also technically in the Ethiopian calendar in November. Think about it. We're in one, one, one. So yes, they changed our calendar, but we are, we have been using it for our positive organic timeline birthing. Okay. So we're, we are in, so July going into August almost, but we, they are still technically in November going into 12. Okay. So November really is what we're looking at. We're, so we're looking at the power of not only the number seven and the eight and all the beauties that come with that. So number seven, the balance of our chakras, the rainbow, that ba- the rainbow within us, the, you know, the major predominant colors, right? And all that comes with us. I, we, we speak a lot about this. So I'm going to skip to what's new. Then the eight, which is the infinity pro, um, protection. You know what I've noticed is that a high, I don't know why it's pretty horrible, but when I'm talking to my clients, a lot of clients, when they received um, um, rape or sexual abuse, a lot of them were where they're eight. You know, I was just watching a video where there was uh, this man popped up on my TikTok and he uh, took a child and she was eight. And there's so there's something about that, how it's telling us that even though um, for and they were able to find the man by uh, neighbor web uh, neighbor doorbell cam, and then they basically were able to rescue the child. So that was a beautiful story. But I feel that the child unfortunately received abuse through that nasty man. So there's something that the collective is agreeing to in some form um that the number eight is a powerful number and it has to do with healing transmuting and protecting the children and the fact that it is an infinity so even though situations have occurred to us and if you watch our video that i recently did our last um, episode that we did a week ago with that i did with laura i shared something really important personal about my life um so you can watch that to find out more about that so how the number eight has been protecting us even in moments and times and spaces when we felt we were we were being harmed or we felt we were about to get harmed how that infinity of love protection and that perseverance kept you going and kept you and taught you a lot right so but then so it basically what it represents is the union so the number eight and this is why this is huge, guys. So since the number eight represents the union, and it also represents the divine mother and father union, because you can say father is one circle, mother is one circle. And then when you unify them, what do they make? They make the eight, the infinity symbol, right? So the fact that there are two moons that represent divine mother, divine father, is another, of course, Stellar gateway awakening and unification of the feminine, the divine feminine and the masculine, divine masculine that are coming together and they're shifting the earth. Okay, now with this, okay, so we understand that. All right. Okay, so what is huge is that I just realized I ran into a video of a little girl speaking. Of course, the angels made sure I ran into it. It was on TikTok. I'm not going to show it to you. Just because of the content that I share, um, I don't want to put any uh, further. Um, I, I just want to ensure that I am um, 
not putting too much attention on on the little girl that's sharing this but it was important that i talk to you that it was a child that delivered this message so there is a child in tic on TikTok. her mother shares her videos and if you come across it then you come across it because you're meant to and if you do come across send love to them for their safety because it's a mother and a child so i don't know how the little girl is she might be seven or eight i'm not sure so she um just a short little clip maybe a couple seconds long she's telling her mother that uh and this i think this was posted a couple days ago that there is a gate opening up and she said it's the 11th gate and her mother said what does that mean and her explanation to that was that she said that uh it means that oh man this earth is going to change i forgot how she said it but she said that basically the earth was going to change where people were going to become nicer so that's child way to explain that so what does that mean in our perspective and then she said basically that we are connected to another world in that moment in time so basically the the new earth we're connecting it's a bridge so again tartarian temples pyramids dates, numbers, how significant they are, and how the numbers actually make, make up the codex of creation, because you use numbers within creation, numbers, sound, energy, plasmic fields, colors, to create frequencies, so on. Okay, all right, so now I'm gonna share with you what does that mean? What did that little girl mean? Oh, this is huge. So in 2012 we began this journey okay so that was our calendar our gregorian calendar but technically so it began it say in the 3d okay the 2012 began the new earth shifting the further bifurcation we talk about of the two third worlds there's a whole playlist on youtube there that you can watch and again any of these playlists you could also find them um, in the future in odyssey too but the bifurcation that began okay it began in 2012 physically 3d but initially spiritually energetically it began in 2020 2021 in the ethiopian calendar because our 2012 was there so Hold on, let me, let me make sure I don't get this confused. Um, so in 2020, 2021, that was their 2012 in the Ethiopian calendar. Again, that runs by the 13th cycle, the real cycle, okay? So technically it was 2012 originally, okay? So that's why we saw the choice that people had. And that's why really they rolled out the, the you know what, um, so that they could try to get people to take this so that they could densify their energy and insert um, artificial intelligence into them so that they wouldn't ascend because they knew that the real Ethiopian calendar 2012 was 2020, 2021. So that was their 2012, right? So so that was part of their bio, uh, their bio uh, diabolical plan, okay? So how have we gotten there though? And how have we gotten here to the 11th gate opening? So what does that mean? <laughs> Let's go into that. All right, here we go. I'm going into the alchemy to what this means, okay? Make sure you hit like and share this video as far as you can. Maybe share the rumble one because the image is not showing through YouTube, don't know why. Well, in a way, but um, so let's see. So what does that mean? Here we go. Here's the plan. So this is a collective plan that has been happening to get us to this point in time and space. Okay, so I'm gonna show you my website. The reason why um, that is important is because the gate are those keys that we've been talking about. There's a whole playlist on YouTube explaining the keys and what they mean, okay? So if you haven't signed up to my newsletter, make sure you go over there and sign up. Oh, let's change that image. I'm on a platform. I'm not supposed to be talking about that kind of stuff. Okay. So um, 
Let me pause that there. Okay. So let's go over here. And we're going to go here to the 13 keys. Earth chakras. Okay. So in our Gregorian time, in the 3D, the gates have been opening. So what happens is that for weeks, four to five weeks during this time that I have mentioned, all of this time, these pyramids and these temples connect to the grandest. It's like you could say a birthing point to Mother Earth and say she has reached dilation and she's birthing and she is birthing out the energies for the year one because in the Ethiopian calendar, September 11, Yeshua's true birthday, that's when the Ethiopian calendar begins. So this these energies are lit up right now. They've It's already begun. And see, if we look at this calendar here, we have given you where are the keys and their locations. So you go to my website. If not, you could buy the book. Actually, there's a whole chapter on the keys and the sacred laws of the universe and how you could become sovereign and not allow infringements upon you anymore because you know your sacred laws. So this chapter right under Galactic Soul History of the Universe. But otherwise, you can find it. So much information actually on, under my site. In case you guys haven't explored it, I invite you to explore my site. There's a lot of being shared. Okay, so here we are. So what's going to happen right here is that the number 11 gateway is going to open. So why? Because look at this list right here. Number 11 is the Shambhala, the Tibet, the law of potential. And I started talking to you guys about the Shambhala. Now I understand why. So let me show you, explain to you a little summary of the key of Shambhala. And I'm going to keep explaining to you how this has been happening every year. Okay, so what is the Shambhala key? It's the infinity potential of all organic life forms, once taken form into light. The infinity of possibilities that one soul can evolve and expand into because of the infinity potentials of creation. The Shambhala is the infinite light that ignites our soul to explore and expand into infinite expressions and potentials. The law of potential is what comes next after the law of purpose, which is why it is number 11. So not only are we in the, in the Ethiopian calendar right now, number 11 and the poor, the gate of the number 11 is opening, guys. So the number one, so which is why it is number 11, the number one being in a multiplied divine sequence, which holds the individual and collective manifestation powers of new thoughts and ideas. When we go from zero to one, the zero represents the infinite cycle of life and creational thoughts, and the one then converts into the intended thought being manifested. You understand? We go from zero to one, it is manifested. So that's why the ones, one, ones are gigantic. And we are in the year of the 11, the one, one. I'm like vibrating all over and I am freaking out in a good way, guys. <laughs> I really hope you guys are understanding what I'm saying. Oh my God, this is huge. Okay. All right, all right, all right. All right, so I'm gonna go back to explaining to you. So how did we get to the number 11? I mean, to get to the number 11, don't we have to go from one, two, three, four, five? We do. And now I'm going to explain to you finally how we did that. Wow. Okay. Yeah, goosebumps, right? Angel bumps for sure. Okay. So I'm going to share with you the screen again of the sacred dolls, 13 keys. Okay. I actually just taught this class in the Isis Priestess course. So those of you who were part of that or have done the Isis Priestess course, now you can understand this even deeper. Okay, so, all right. Okay, so in 2012, okay, 2012, we began the awakening of these gateways. And every year on the Lionsgate period, these four or five weeks, these gates open up. And they activate and they come online. Do you understand that? So Adama, uh, there's channeling Adama, we had the link. Um, Osiris, Divine Father Osiris explains to us how, um, well, Osiris, uh, Divine Father Osiris is a gatekeeper. 
okay, to these gates. Any Divine Father expression would be a gatekeeper to these gates. And then Adama is the inner earth guardian from the inner earth speaking to us. And they prepared us through those videos to understand, to begin the understanding of these sacred laws. So definitely watch those videos, okay? Now, in 2012, the beginning, it was zero, the creation. Remember what we talked about? Shambhala being first, the zero is the creation, and then the one is it's come into action, into manifestation. So 2012, in our year, Gregorian calendar was that, the circle, okay? The zero. From there, every year, it was infinitely important for us to continue to expand and grow. And what was that, that, that eclipse that happened? What was that, 2017? I'm pretty sure it was. You all confirm that, Gina, in the doc, if anybody remembers. I'm pretty sure it was 2017. Okay, so let's explain that. Okay, so 0, 2012, 2013. Then the focus was on Mount Chesta, the energy being potent. So every year when this lion's gates opened up, a portal, a gate opens up in these spaces. So number two, I mean, number one would be the root chakra, Manchester 2013, the, that gate opened. <sighs> so you can visualize it kind of like a seals, seals, like there is an energy and there's like a seal on it. And that <sighs> the seal releases. And when the seal releases, it's like a burst of energy and uh, a literal benevolence positive portal that's happening that is lit up energetically if you were to see it with your remote view with your um, third eye like we always teach then you can see how these points are all lit up in crystalline right now they're lit up gigantically okay they're at the brightest basically every year in this moment in time and space okay okay so Root chakra, Mount Shasta, law of action happened, its gate that opened, that shifted the collective, Mount Shasta, the states, that happened in 2013. Then 2014, sacral chakra, Peru, basically the South Americas. This, this gate, this opened up in 2014, okay? So maybe think about what you were doing in those years and what was happening and how you were shifting and ascending your consciousness and continual ascension until this final ascension. Then, uh, so that's in 13, 14. So yeah, 13, so 13, 14, 15, 16. Yeah. So then um, in 2000, so 13, 14, 15, the solar plexus, the Africa law free will, all these pyramids again and temples lit up to open up that sacred law. And if you look here, you will understand what these sacred laws mean. There is a summary that tells you what they each represent. This is a quick summary. Again, if you want more details, you you go under, you buy the book, um, uh, Galactic Sanctuary of the Universe. Okay. Um, so galactic soul history of the universe. Okay, so a shifting that would have happened in the collective in 2015 in retaining our sacred law, solar plexus law, free will, and embodying that. Then in 2016, the stellar gateway of Russia law, polarity, then opened up further. That gateway opened up. Again, so these are sacred laws that keep us sovereign. So you want to um, become very familiar on why that is. 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. 2017 was an extremely catalyzing year for a lot of people. That, And I always wonder why 2017 was a gigantic awakening time. It was some, some dark stuff happened to us, catalyzing things that shifted us. But it taught us the law of vibration... Jerusalem, the throat chakra, taught us to speak up, to speak our truth. Me, uh, that was actually the year I came out on YouTube in 2017, where I found my voice and started to speak for the public. Okay, then, so that Jerusalem, 
right here, you know, and the map again. Then in 2018, the third eye pyramid Giza law of cause and effect, that gateway open, that gate then, um, so 19, 2019 was the law of wisdom in the crown chakra, that gate open. 2020, Earth star. So 20, yeah, 20, uh, 2020, Earth star, Atlantic Ocean law of surrender. In 2020, a lot of people actually started remembering their Atlantis life and working on that. Okay. And then 2021, the soul Greece law of evolution. That gate open. 2010, do you remember last year? I didn't quite get it last year. Now I do get it after I received all the sacred knowledge from the Tartarian and, and then the last year's Lionscape. Remember how we talked about last year several times how we were working in Australia for some reason? Now I know why. Because we were literally, that gate was open during the Lionsgate. Universal Gateway Australia, Law of Purpose, Completion. And these numbers are accurate. So Root Chakra, 1, Sacral, 2, 3, Solar Plexus, 4, Stellar Gateway, 5, Throat Chakra, 6, Third Eye, 7, Crown Chakra, 8, Earth Star, 9, Soul Star, 10, Universal Gateway, which was all last year happening in Australia, Law of Purpose. And number 11, what the little girl said, that gate is this year in 2023, the Shambhala, the Tibet Law of Potential. And of course, it will continue. Next year will be 12 and then 13 in 2026, right? No, so that would be 23, 24, 25. Okay. So, but I can tell you that the number 13 has already been activated, but definitely something in 2025 gigantically will happen in regards to love. So let's go into, so, okay, you understand that, okay? So you could read the summary on your own later. Um, before I stop sharing, just a couple of things I want to share here since I'm already on this window. Let me see. Um, oh, yeah. So while I'm here, I want to tell you that you want to check out um, all of your information here. There's our Rising Phoenix Mystery School, you know, that word that we're going to kind of ignore for a second. <laughs> That can be on YouTube. Um, and then also um, Patreon pay payments, channels, and shows. Galactic Port is pretty cool because um, there's some transcripts, some aura sessions that we've transcribed, some sessions there that you want to read, especially the um, abducted from within the womb that was very big and started telling us about that, to be careful what was happening on the infringement that was about to happen about um, the mothers that were carrying and the, you know what, that people injected that was affecting the mothers and the people who so that they would become infertile so that transcription there you can find there and then oh huge i have uploaded so i have oracle cards that were in the making and we are planning on getting those out this year so check this out i updated new images for you all to look this is beautiful archangel jophiel how beautiful is that so a little teaser for you guys to read and so in case anybody's ever asking about angels direct them over to my our site and there you can find them okay so there's a whole list here if you keep click the 13 keys and then the these actual 13 keys that we're talking about the gates that have been opening right and then of course the key the number 11 is metatron right and jophia so here are the the keys you can click them and then check out their pictures and their little summary the other thing while i'm here is i am on pinterest now i am working on it though so i just began it so just wait to some time to start sharing it but i am working on it i am uploading all the shorts and then there's the angel images you guys can go pin them if you are on pinterest and uh yeah go go check out the summaries that we have going on there okay all right thank you for letting me share that okay so back to this um <sighs> wow Ooh, so much information okay so let's talk let me see if there's anything else i want to share mm -hmm. Ooh, wow 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 okay 
Mm, makes so much sense, yes, Jeffrey, right? <laughs> okay, so I'm gonna go through the questions. Let me think really quick though, I'll make sure I covered everything. Mm -hmm. Wow. Okay. Okay, so so here are the questions. So we don't really have too many questions, guys. <laughs> Just comments. I was very clear on our teachings today. Uh, if you have questions, write them now. All right, so let's see. So one of the questions is the lion's gate, right? Okay, so why is it affiliated to the lion? So one, I actually have an aura regression coming out, hopefully in the next week, that is going to go into the lions and how they're actually connected to the Christ consciousness and this beautiful memory of a person remembering the beauty of these lions. We have also had that recent channeling where Shiva explained how he can transform into a tiger, an actual tiger. He could do that like on command and just change from human into tiger. So, um, so really what the felines represent and why there's always a connection to that well in our astrology uh, we are a leo and even in the old astrology the 13 cycle there we're still in leo so what does lions felines mean oh. in many forms basically they're portals what i could tell you is that they're portals so if you connect to your cats they will portal you in through their eyes, not only to infinite love and source, but also different timelines and paths. So it is like they're carriers of the Akashic, because that's another thing that we've explained to you. I have a guided meditation that teach that's telling you how to travel through your Akashic. We'll add the link later. Um, so also the Sphinx, what I was talking, I was talking to... Um, the angels and I wanted to know I was like so why did they break the sphinx let me try to pull up a picture for you guys even though you all know what a sphinx the sphinx is but why did they break the nose off these dark people off the, the sphinx okay so what I can tell you is that they they said that the sphinx let me see if I find a good close up here for you. Is missing their nose. Because I'm sure you figured it out already. They had a feline nose. So there's nostrils here. There's, it was wide. It was a, like a feline nose. So they broke that on purpose. Okay. All right. Um, so let's see what else um and then we've talked about in the past how the cash color records is found there but so too in every country every continent and actually just about at least in the states um there are some sp spaces that you can find the akashic to remember more of your soul um so there are the hollow records and the access that are connected to pyramids temples mon monuments but they're really temples Okay, so that's that. So when you're seeing, they call them chimeras, but they're really, um, you could call them chimeras, but they're basically, they're telling us how we are, we can be both of these human forms. We're both human, like for example, this one here, this Sphinx. And then also Ishtar, I channeled Ishtar and Nana. And she had a form, right? She had that blue avian form where she was half bird, half human. So how we have these capabilities and of of these energies, this royal blood, this goddess, god blood within us that we could, in times and spaces, we did transform with wings and so on, you know, before, um, before the fall of Atlantis, really, it was just natural. Um, but even after the fall of Atlantis, there were still some people who were able to do this because they still hold, held that magic inside of them. So there's one, right? It's cool. Okay, see how she has the, the feet. Okay, so when we are connecting to the Christ consciousness, you are basically connecting to the, to the lions, the tigers, the felines. Um, there are guardians, and they could also be seen as some of them are dragons, are griffins, magical beings that are protecting us as well. 
So even in times and spaces where we are going through trauma, chaos, violence, abuse of any kind, the animals are always there holding space and protecting us and being our guardians energetically. Because if you think about some of the things that have happened to you that were really traumatic, how did you even get through it? How did you even make it here? And or if you're still working on healing that, this is the time you really want to heal that because all the poor, all the gates that I showed you starting from one from zero 2012 the creation two one two three to still until 11. These are moments in time and spaces that you can bifurcate astral travel bifurcate into your body in that moment in time and space. Where were you in 2017? Where were you in 2012? And you can bifurcate into that body and help he, she, or she get to this moment in time and space that is understanding this material, this knowledge. And also all those years that I explained. So the, you know, 2012, how it represented the zero or 2013, how it represented the root chakra. So in 2013, what was going on with you that kept you in guilt, shame, fear, or any lower vibratory emotions that kept you from rising out into the law of action that kept you stuck, stagnant, or even moments in time and spaces that felt like the, you were stuck in your root chakra and you can access, especially during this time of the lion's gate times, every year, basically. Every gate will be accessible every year during this time. But the truth is that you can access it all the time, consciously, through your consciousness, through your heart. But it is definitely at the highest potential during this time. Okay. So think about how you can work on yourself. This is very self-healing, very self-activating, um, igniting, empowering for you. Um, for you to figure this out, work within yourself, really guiding yourself meditations within yourself a lot of nature right now and like we always say no meat or processed sugar be very light as try to be as raw vegan as you can um, until the lion's gate is over because when the lighter you make the body the easier you're able to astral travel bifurcate get out of that get out of you know self-worth or whatever nor emotions you have that are blocking you from realizing that you have the infinite potential and that you are the time traveling machine through your consciousness through all time and space so letting go of these things that are holding you back from stepping into that vibration to time travel and it's time travel is just basically through your consciousness your third eye the isis priestess course of quantum galactic akashic reading is available on demand right now through my site go learn it go learn how to do this on your own and then when you travel you go to those times and moments and heal them but you could also do this on your own but if you want a guideline that is so beautiful and empowering do those courses under my site risingphoenixaura.com so um let's see what else mm -hmm. you know the mandala video would be very important how this the, the, the lotus flower is within your crown and how you travel through these petals mm -hmm. um the lions that's what they represent let me see if there's anything else so yes yeah, so that's why the feline larin um a lot of people in this time really start remembering the feline larin or feel feel activated or connected to if they had a feline any type of feline because there's many versions of felines not just in lyra many of them throughout the multiverse and universe so if they had a connection, if you had a connection to a feline life, this is the time that you will feel that. But ultimately, it is because the lions, felines are connected to the Christ consciousness. So basically, they are the guardian. So you can say, so when we were born, we were born with a dragon, okay? All of us are born with a dragon. We all have a dragon, whether we believe it or not, okay? And if you don't have one, you can create one just with your intent, your love. And help hatch an egg of a dragon in the ether and then that baby dragon will go really fast with you and protect you so so dragons are our partners the dogs and kitties right that represent that and in, in the earth mm -hmm. then 
you could say the lions, the tigers, the felines are the guardians of the Christ consciousness. You understand? So that's that's the relation there. They also, again, are those portals that are so poor, important for us. And why, you know, like um, they've been targeted too, like in the Salem witch trials, if you had a black cat, oh, you're a witch, right? <laughs> um, or black cats are bad luck. What a big lie. Um, so they don't want people to connect to the beyond through the cat's energies. Even the purr that they, that they you know, they purr on you, that energy vibrates you to a theta brainwave. Yeah. And on and on and on. Okay. So thank you for that question that brought on those answers. So let's see what else you guys have. Mm -hmm. But to answer your question, are a lot of Lyran star seeds born here at this time? If they're born during this portal, I would say so that they are, but ultimately we're just really tapping into our feline energy incarnations okay someone else is asking why what does the sphinx symbolize it is it is it hybrid half human half line i don't like to call it hybrid i don't feel that that is a word that should be ever um mentioned with the positive side the true organic chimeras and um so i don't think that that should ever be mentioned with that but i feel like there's going to be a lot of distortion that you're going to hear a lot of a lot of false information about it but basically sphinx represents again the the potentials of human life how we are not just human we are can be infinite beings throughout earth we could be an elephant being a crystal being a feline being a canine canine being a ladybug being you name it on and on and on and infinite and you know the book will tell you about these different lives that we can be and then how really they are our guardians so even to animal lives who are our guardians are the cats and the dogs and that's why you see the feline one as the sphinx that travels beneath her you travel into your hall of records to your akashic and who is guarding there is Anubis, and you're going to hear all sorts of, again, false information about Anubis, but Anubis is positive, and he is a canine being, just like your dog is, and then basically that's why there's a canine being there guarding the, the your, your, your Akashic. If people get into your Akashic, and they mean ill intent and harm, and they don't practice shielding and everything that we teach, but say they mean harm, they can really harm your memory, your Akashic, especially for you new souls who are coming into our content. Be very cautious to who you allow into your Akashic. Really, they should not be going into it unless the higher self is basically, even then, like no one goes into your Akashic. You're, there's a, usually a, a very big dragon guarding that space, your hall of records. And even say, for example, when I do quantum galactic Akashic readings, I'm not going into their hall of records, but I'm getting their Akashic because their higher self is telling me what's allowed to be shared. So I'm never overstepping boundaries. If people are going into your hall of records, that is infringing. So we teach on how to do it safely where there's there, they'll be standing there in your hall of records and they're giving the information. The doors might even open, but you're not stepping into their hall of records. That's a no-no. Um, okay, so let's see what else. Mm -hmm. Okay. Someone said, I keep seeing lying faces lately when um, their eyes are closed. Can you give us tips on what areas of the life lying gates will affect or cause a transition in? Hmm. So say that um, you've had, you're holding on to something. Maybe you thought you did the work on it, but maybe you still have, you're missing just the final piece. So this is a time that you want to go into and think about you and what moments and times and spaces did you receive trauma, whether it was whoever it was, energetically, spiritually, psychically. 
and you're going to provide the source of light from that gate opening, that infinite potential, law of potential, Shambhala, to help the you there that's stuck because she's, she or he is stuck in that time and space in trauma, right? Or whatever's happening to them. So you send this energy over, you channel the source of light to them from this moment in time. You send it to them, a wave of love. Send it, send it, send it. So that they can get unstuck so that they can move forward, make a step forward. So go to all those moments in time and spaces right now and do that. And I see why I mentioned that <laughs> through the Laura Eisenhower show that we had, Cosmic Mother Rising on the Rumble, how important that was. Because that is, if we're stuck, then we can't grow, right? It, and if we're, say, a tree, We'd be stuck on that same growth. We can't expand our branches, our roots. They can't grow because we're stuck, frozen in that moment in time and space, in trauma or whatever's happening. So as we know, all these things, a trauma basically are the main causes to illness and disease. If you have something like that, what is this moment in time and space, whether it's this life or past life in your Akashic that you want to travel to that you that is holding you back? Again, I have guided meditations. You could check out the whole playlist. I am also on Spotify, and they have um, we have all the, all the videos there. Not all 600, but a good portion of them under Spotify. So if you want a guided meditation to help you get through, uh, um, to guide you through these things, just go intuitively. There's, there's so many different titles. Read the title and see what is best for you during this time. Mm-hmm. So yeah, so so you're seeing lion faces though. Because your higher self was telling you that you needed to step into gear, step into action, and get going with that lion's gate portal. And you wanna achieve it and embody it to its infinite potential. Right? Okay. So someone says, do the keys of the previous year strengthen at each Lion's Gate portal? Yes. So even though, so it's like a opening, right? In that location where I tell you. So every year when the next one opens up, all the other ones that came before, thank you for this question, before that, say number 11, are going to open up and lit, light up with them. So we should be seeing remotely feeling, remote viewing and seeing, feeling and knowing that there are actual 11 gates open. Okay? They're open. You should be seeing those eight maps, the eight key points that I showed you on the map lit up. Um, okay. <clears throat> Let's see. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so they do strengthen. Thank you. Yep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So the, someone else said also, well, the same person also is to say good time to balance out your karma or get ourselves back in balance. Exactly. Where we may be out of balance. Exactly. You're answering your own questions. <laughs> Thank you to your higher self and saying all of that. Um, so, yep, yeah, it, it's just most powerful time to be healing on ourselves for sure. Next one is, are there any videos on Beset? I haven't channeled her yet. Mm -hmm. The feline being, maybe I will add her to the list. I also have Nostradamus waiting. <laughs> and uh, Chamio, and I just have Archangel Chamio. I have uh, many waiting, but they tell me exactly when they're going to go. They're in line, <laughs> waiting to when they're next. Okay. In that right moment, in that divine timing, well, I will add her. Okay. If so, if there's not, could you share information on her? Mm. So basically, she was a f actual feline Lyran. She was, um, I'll let her share her story, but she's telling me right now is that she was from Lyra and she incarnated on Earth to bring Lyra's energies into Earth. So, um, so she was a lot of this Lion's Gate energy helping us get there. So she would be a very strong. Uh, divine mother expression the, say she's a feline to divine mother expression and um she's very good guardian to be connecting to in this moment in time uh, she was part of that architect uh that archetype uh architect the architect of creating the lion's gate 
And uh, let me see what else she says. Mm -hmm. The ability, she says, the ability of that we all hold, how we're athletic, we are moving, we're intuitive to remember that no matter what, even if they try, we should not allow ourselves to ever be cornered in a corner. That feline can always jump out of a corner, jump into a tree, a branch, reach higher levels, right? What, what do the cats always do? They, they're a higher level, right? They, they're on a cat tower or they're trying to reach the highest level they could possibly because truly they're viewing. When they do that, they're raising in vibration and dimension to be at the higher cat tower. And then um, they're, so they're viewing kind of like a like an eagle viewing the lower dimension so physically we're seeing it happen but energetically they're doing something in the higher realms to be in a higher um position mm -hmm. so then that reminds us with this beautiful expression is that a set that for us to be like that too, right? We should be in a bird's eye, in a cat's view, higher position right now, be really be viewing ourselves not being so stuck. The biggest thing I think to a lot of people on earth is that they can't get past traumatic situations or they can't get past basically something that they're stuck in because they forget that they are this infinite being beyond creation. You are a source being. So even though say something happened to you, traumatic right whatever's holding you back are you that trauma are you the trauma are you that person that that happened to them then no you're not so initially you want to work within yourself and heal yourself and and take acknowledgement and responsibility to the situation but then you can't stay stuck in it and you can't be in a victim mentality you cannot do that Right, because that's the game the narcissists, the people who violate play. Oh yeah, they like to play victim very easily. So you can't do that though. And you have to let go of that if you're working on that. So the biggest thing is that people for hold on to that trauma anything anywhere where and they don't move out from it. And you forget that you're okay, you're just this human expression here. But you're really this infinite being. So what what we're teaching you here is that remember, whoever you are, are you Archangel Michael? Are you Archangel Gabriel? Are you um, a uh, Arcturian and Andromeda being a uh, higher self? Who are you? A unicorn? You're this massive, beautiful source of light being, and you're not limited, and you're not that trauma or that being that you were in that moment in time so after you heal it move on from it and remember how infinite your potential your capabilities your abilities are and do not hold yourself in that viewing you're viewing yourself still like that little girl that little boy that went through that that younger self you why are you still viewing yourself like that when you're this infinite being that can connect to the infinite potentials of this Chambala. So acknowledge it, take responsibility, learn the lessons, heal it, and then don't see yourself like that anymore. Let that go, send yourself love. See yourself like the true being you are beyond the veil. You're not this human really form. You're this infinite being that is gorgeous that is powerful, that has the greatest strength, that carries a sword, that has a shield, that stands up for others, that helps the collective in their own role. So, yes, you understand? Okay. <sighs> okay. Okay, so next question is, is the Sun and Master surface bay connected to star series? I would say all, all Sun and Masters are connected to, because that's why we have Pyramid Giza that directly is connection to the Orion belt and then um, series, star series as well. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, yeah, <laughs> it's, everyone connects to star series. 
but yeah so you if you're if you're connecting to them that would be a good point to connect to him from so someone's saying i feel like there's information in the cat's eyes yes you could actually see universes in their eyes mm -hmm. you could see the ether the astral absolutely someone said when i look at the same person when i look at mm, your cat's eyes you see like portals within them exactly almost like traveling mm -hmm. yeah that, where i already talked about that yes i already talked about that earlier <laughs> so how they're the portal and that's truly how you connect through the eyes one mm -hmm. yeah yep and then that's what again the lion's gate and what that represents the gateways there the gateways the gates are the portals Oh, so is there any certain crystals that are helpful during lion's gate and connecting to Sirius? Gold, yellow, gold, yellow, white, gold, yellow would be the strongest ones. So any crystals you have like that. So pyrite, right? Yellow fluorite, yellow calcite, yellow topaz, um, uh, golden terminated quartz, right? Because terminated quartz comes in gold, silver, and bronze, I believe um yellow citron abundance creating right now so it is a pivotal moment in time and space so so many qualities guys right now is happening right are happening so lion's gate 11 11 we're looking at the 8 a portal infinite protection one on one creation then we're looking at the gold yellow energy that re literally represent abundance the solar plexus and then yeah it's just uh so beautiful again the 11 because of the ethiopian calendar um, mm -hmm. Okay, are na narcissists negative beings so, so say soulless and basically controlled by negative ones? Typically they are. I have yet to ever seen a like official narcissist like ever transform out of being a narcissist. Most narcissists will stay narcissists because that's they're yeah, just just really compromised souls that are choosing who are not even themselves anymore. They're they're the entities that's inside of them. Entities. Um so typically they will not change. They will also they will always have those tendencies of narcissists where they play the victim and you're the bad guy and you're killing them and who knows what else kind of drama gossip uh all the things that i run from <laughs> um so yep next one is can your birth chart get stolen do you mean like the astrology birth chart is, is that what you mean by that um so there are you know as you know i do sessions on people and i hear so many stories of supposed readers astrologers channelers healers that go into your space even through an email that they don't even need to meet you in person through online or anything you're just interacting with them you're there if they're negative polarized yes they can go into your birth charts and astrology and your akashic if you're not setting up proper shielding and not consenting boundaries on your fields they can and most of us that happens to us especially when we start waking up we run into these people they teach us a lot of lessons and we grow from it but yeah i think that's what you mean so completely stolen no i mean they could access it infringe upon it add some inverted timelines that that weren't there originally um because that's what the archon and the artificial intelligence and negative entities do with their dark sorcery and black magic okay wow amazing so we're just about to finish up i don't see any other questions right now but i do see comments that are so important for us to share now and that usually i add more things to that if i need so comments are the cover picture to this video is infinitely powerful it really ties in all these lands you're speaking of together i know right i was like what that's the one <laughs> yeah and then the next one is I did high priestess course the, yes the uh, the isis priestess course yeah you meant the isis priestess course yes learning angelic shields is the most amazing it is it feels so beautiful it feels like you're embodied and floating in love all day long even if a situation arises you're able to feel it and push it away 
read it to the best as possible as you can. So he, next one is, it is also from the Mayan calendar, 25th of July starts new year. Yes. Oh, okay. Uh, oh, the Mayan calendar. Oh, oh, I didn't know that. Okay. Okay. Beautiful. Yeah. And then the Ethiopian calendar, is September 11. Thank you. Thank you for sharing that. Someone says uh, you that they follow a shaman. She watched the uh, uh, SOF. Oh, yes, on the Freedom movie, and saw the head of a lion superimposed on the face of Jim Cavizio. Yeah, she channeled Yeshua on the movie, and Yeshua called Jim and Tim his lions of Judah. Yeah, I feel that that is accurate. Yeah, definitely. I agree with that completely. He also embodies a lot of Yeshua energy, and then the main one, though, Tim, definitely Archangel Michael. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so lions mm -hmm. so how do you think it was that they were able to do that july 4th right they definitely tapped into without them knowing so i don't think they're they're spiritual they're more like christians right um but uh spiritual like us i feel that they tapped into the lion's gate energy for sure the christ consciousness that is embodied through the lion's gate every year right so what i'm seeing right now is like this the embodiment so remember we channeled the christ consciousness and they said that they were the first race created from the archangel so the archangel so their source source incarnated into the star the star named zen then the archangels birthed out of the star and then the archangels were the very first collective of consciousness they created what's the christ consciousness so that's why the angels are also christ consciousness as well but it's like, you know, a level, a level, and the third level. You could say source, archangels, Christ consciousness, third level of benevolence. Um, wow. So, mm-hmm. Yep, yep. Anything else I want to say about that? Let's see. Let me listen. Uh-huh. Yes, so the Christ consciousness, again, will be strongly embodied through the lion's gate every year okay someone said amazing i just had a dream they had a dream that last night they were with a multiple groups of people each group was coming together to draw different paintings and you were guided to look for group number eight yes you were wow beautiful so so what does that represent right like so groups of people and they're painting okay so what does painting mean? As an artist, you're in your third eye, your imagination, and you're creating, and you're in wonder, right, to create that painting. So typically, you could either, as a painting, be painting a landscape that you're looking at directly, a person that you're looking at directly, or in a form like what we're talking about with the eights and the elevens, you are really creating your manifestation. You're painting your manifestation. So you are, we talk about an aura, it's that you're the painter and you're painting every stroke, every shape, every color within the consciousness. So really it helping you embody the fact that you are the painter. No one else is holding that brush but you. And you are the one that's deciding if you're going to stroke left and right and forward and what shapes and what colors you're going to embody in this painting. What kind of colors, right? The colors represent the beauties and the energies and the multiverse. Every verse is a different color embodiment. So how are you combining these infinite energies to create this painting in your manifestation during this time? Yeah, taking responsibility, um, understanding this. So I was in a reading and I was, the higher self was helping me coach someone through a situation. And their, their main thing was, for example, everyone always wants to know what happened to my twin flame? Where are they? Right? <laughs> Why am I not with them? What is going on? It's, you know, like, okay, well, first of all, let's answer, let's ask that question correctly. Well, we talked about, we have a twin flame video. You can check that out. But you're asking for example how come you haven't met your twin flame the first question to that is how come you haven't set it up for you to meet your twin flame because you're the painter and you're the writer of your book so what is going on with you as the other half of the twin flame or the twin flame on the other end that what kind of lessons and what are you growing in 
to get you to the situation. So we often look at like, okay, why hasn't this happened to me and so on. But really, why have you not created this for you and manifested this for you? What are you need to work on? Are you embodying love? Are you attracting this twin flame union? We forget that we are carriers of these energies. If you want your twin flame union to come to you, put out a call from your heart and you pull it out and you echo it out with love. No, no, none of this like, okay, because you're alone and you're sad and you're depressed and you're, which people talk about all the time when they're trying to find a twin flame union. If you are in that, you're never going to find them. You need to embody confidence, strength, a full source of light. And you feel this love that comes out of your heart and you send that wave of love to them. And you call for them and you call for their love. And you call, you call for their sacred union with you. That love that you're echoing out to them will help them get through any obstacle. And then will help you as well. Because you're being love. Love is the key to everything like we always teach. So typically, if you put out that call, the twin flame will answer it in divine timing, in surrender, right? Okay. So let's see what else we're just about done. Okay. Um, someone said beautiful confirmations this morning in my meditation. The angels brought my attention to expand the shield of my house and visualize it as a Tartarian dome. That's right. That's right. That's right. Tartarian dome roofed building. This will energize the home. Exactly. They, that's what they always tell me. It's like you are in a Tartarian home. This will energize the home, and it was also and it, it was also connected to Shambhala. So thank you. Oh, beautiful! Thank you for confirming that for us. So you would embody the ether in your home, your land, your space, that sacred temple that you is encasing you and protecting you and sheltering you. Pull in that energy, and tons of videos on that on the Antarctica series, Tartarian series, and what the ether is and all that. Okay, shorts you can find again under TikTok, and now I'm working on Pinterest too. So. Okay. And someone said, Yeshua said in one of the regressions how he was a lion in a village in Africa. Oh, yeah, I feel that that is definitely very accurate. Mm -hmm. Someone said, man, I'm a cat lady. Felines are my favorite. I just look at a lion and I feel like a lion. I know. I am definitely a cat lady. I never thought I'd be a cat lady. But it's like when you get one, it's like so easy to just get more and more. Because technically you're cleaning, you're cleaning up the kitty litter already. And they're so easy to take care of and so independent. And they're so cute. Yes. <laughs> All right. Um, funny. Uh -huh. Absolutely. Connect to their inner lion, their inner tiger, their inner jaguar, panther. That's inside of them. Most likely, if they're a cat, they've had some kind of life, whether a lion, jaguar, panther. <laughs> and so we'll say, you're right. I've been feeling like there's a splinter left. Uh-huh. Thank you so much. Yeah, find that splinter. Pull it out. Next one is, before I moved, I had dreams of mountain lions in Arizona supporting you, your birthing of your babies. But I think the babies were birthing new timelines. Yeah, for yourself. Lions are so special. Absolutely. Good, good. Uh, yay, I'm so happy that we are putting all of what we have delivered today, and we're about to end this, putting this together for you all, um, so you can find it in your own way. Um, so, Veluvia, beautiful souls, Veluvia, Veluvia, Veluvia. All right, love you to all. Thank you for all that you are, and to such a beautiful activating video. Yes, love to everyone. Okay, yeah, we are done, you all. I don't see any other questions. We are good. I've answered a lot, covered a lot. Thank you for being here. I love you with all that I am. I also want to point out my feline lashes with the eyeliner. That were pretty cool. <laughs> um, yes, and so let's end it with a song and go meet me in Nashville. Let's do this. Let's activate those Tartarian buildings. Um, yes, 
and host i'm hosting a retreat again there online workshop in september come join us for that as well and yeah come sign up to courses sessions i am there just awaiting for you come follow your heart to mine i love you with all that i am let's go finish it off with a song don't forget to dance this is again called fire dance by thundering drums fire dance guys go light a fire light a fire every day huge a, even a little fire during this time keep lighting the fire <laughs> so, uh, yeah i don't know what happened there okay beautiful i love you all thank you for being here honor you and respect you Mwah. Share this video as far as you can and share the Rumble one, the Odyssey everywhere. Go follow me on all platforms, Pinterest, TikTok. I am there, Twitter, Instagram. I love you. I will see you next time. Thank you.